Welcome back to Little and Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today we are going to do some crackle wine glasses. These are gorgeous glasses. They're fun. They're pretty easy to make. They just take a little patience, um, but ultimately they turn out beautiful. Um, so we're going to do a couple different styles. Um, we're going to start out with doing just the alcohol ink, and then we're going to do one in the same tutorial with glitter and alcohol ink. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to clean up. We're going to do the, first, like I said, we're going to do the alcohol inks first. Uh, what you need is cling wrap. You do not want the press and seal, um, like on the dinosaur or the lizard skin. You want actual cling wrap, like saran wrap. Um, it does not need to be glad. It can be any of any brand from the dollar store or anywhere. You need a rubber band. You need whatever ever alcohol inks you need, and you need a very clean wine glass. Now, these wine glasses have been wiped down with alcohol, then washed with soap and water, and dry, thoroughly dried, and they are ready to go. So I'm going to clean up. We're going to do one at a time. Here we go. Okay, we have got our press and seal, nope, sorry, our cling wrap down on our parchment paper. Um, we are going to start with the yellow and the orange. We're going to kind of make it look like a little bit sunsetty, I guess. Um, you don't need a lot of ink for this one. Well, I guess it depends on your preference. Um, I'm just going to dot a few of the dots of ink around. Do, 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 do. Here we go. We're going to throw in the yellow in between. So I'm sorry, that is called Valencia Orange, and that is by R Ranger. This is Jacquard. This is called Sunbright Yellow. We're going to drop him in there. Make sure he debuts in the cup. It's really fun to watch them blend together. Okay. The cup, this table is not level, so it's trying to run away a little bit there. So then what we're going to do is we are going to take the wine glass. We are going to set it down into the middle of that. We're going to bring the cling, rack, cling, cling wrap up the sides of the wine glass. We're going to press it just like you, do, you see me do in my crackle tumbler. And we are going to attach it. We're going to make sure it's all pushed down. And then we're going to put a rubber band around that sucker. We're going to let this guy sit for probably five to six days. We're going to turn him upside down. I don't want that big puddle of ink on the bottom. We're going to work it up. We do want the wrinkles in this one because that's going to give it the crackle look. And just like that. So we're going to let this cup sit for probably five or six days um, and let those colors uh, do their thing and dry onto the cup. And then we will move from there. So now let's start a second one. You can see there was a little tiny hole in my cling wrap, um, but I didn't worry too much about that. So I'm going to set it for the second one. We'll be right back. Okay, now on this one, we are going to be using uh, Jacquard Passion Purple. And we are going to be using uh, Ranger Mermaid. Um, as you guys saw, it's a very quick process. You just drop your inks and go. So we are going to be dropping this down. Do, 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 And it depends on how high up the cup you want it to go with how much ink you add. The more ink you add, the higher up the cup it's going to run. The dark color is going to overtake that aqua very, very fast. So I'm adding a little bit more aqua. Okay. Then we're going to, again, drop the cup right in the middle. Bring the cling wrap up the sides. Kind of squeeze it on out. Get our rubber band around it to hold the cling wrap in place. Turn it upside down. Squish the. If you, I, the reason I squish the puddle out of the bottom is that will just take forever to dry if you don't squish the puddle out from the bottom, and you leave it. You can see how gorgeous those tendrils are, and let that 
And so this one, I added less ink so you can see the difference. This one, I added a lot more ink. It's already up to the rim of the glass. This one, I added less ink, so it's only tendrils. All right, so we are going to let these cups sit for about five days to make sure that that ink is dry underneath that plastic. And uh, But now we're going to jump on and we're going to start with the glitter section and the glitter cup done in a similar style. All right, guys, we're going to put the Hang Method epoxy on our tumbler. This is just a wine glass that has been spray painted purple. Uh, we are going to do the white over the top. So here we go. We need just a tiny bit of epoxy. That is enough. It's probably not even, it's probably not even two milliliters. Two milliliters does like a full like 30 to 40 ounce. This is just a tiny little wine glass. So I just use a little gob. Uh, and then we're going to run it down. This is called the hang method. Um, it's how I get my epoxy attached to my cups. Um, I like this method because it makes the epoxy really adhere really strong and it lays the epoxy uh, glitter down flat. Uh, so we are just working this down. And getting it all over the cup. And then we are going to glitter this cup to death. Get it done real nice and pretty. So I'm gonna just, this just takes a little elbow grease. You're just basically sliding it. I'm trying to see if I can give you a side view. You're just sliding it on down the cup. Sorry, in the background, if you hear my dog and my goats. Well, they're not my goats. We have goats today visiting from the neighbor's house eating all of our weeds. And Turbo doesn't quite know what to do about it. Um, so they are in the background for sure. So I've got that now really, really well done. I'm going to go ahead and remove it off my stand. Because it doesn't need to be on there. Clean that off. I am going to switch gloves real quick. And we'll be right back. Well, we're going to be right back in just a second. Take my glove off. All right, now we are going to take the color Bow. This is from our website, B-E-A-U. If you search our website for it, it's beautiful. Um, oops, this little sticker is kind of in the way. I'm in the middle of labeling all my glitters and the jars. Um, and you can see his gorgeous iridescence over the purple. Um, that's why I did the purple. I wanted just like a little shimmer of the purple to shine through. So we're just coating this guy real good all right so he, we are going to have to scoop it up and now i'm just going to use a little medicine jar medicine measuring cup pour it in there and we're going to keep on going Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, is my favorite. Da, da, da. All right, so we're going to let him hang out um, and cure up probably overnight by the time I get back to getting the layer of epoxy over him. Tap him off, get all the excess off. But that is absolutely stunning um, with that glitter on there. So we're going to let, Bo is such a beautiful color. He's one of our top sellers on our website. I'll definitely make sure I link him for you guys. Um, we're going to let this sit overnight, then we're going to get some epoxy going over the top of him, and then we're going to do some really cool stuff with it. Okay, so we are back. I've got my chemical respirator on, guys, so I'm going to be a little more difficult to ear, hear. Not ear. <laughs> Whoopsie. Um, and I've got my uh, epoxy mixed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply it with my gloved hand. Um, so making sure there's no fuzz balls on my gloves. And um, normally I use a epoxy uh, stir stick, but I want a nice thin coat on here because we're really just trying to get a nice, um, a barricade between the inks and this beautiful glitter. You're going to see this glitter just start to shine 
and like really sparkle out when I start adding this uh, epoxy to it. So we've already got the epoxy mixed, part A and part B, just like we did for the hang method, but now we've got a little extra so that we're gonna be able to get a nice coating over the top of this. Then we're gonna let that cure up overnight and tomorrow we'll start our next steps. So here you can see as I start adding that the glitter just comes glistening off of there. It's so pretty. This is Bo. Um, he is one of our top sellers on the website. We always try to have him in stock. He's a gorgeous boy. He gets a lot of attention. If you've seen my TikTok lately, you've seen him featured there as well. People love this guy. Um, if you don't know the story of all of our glitter names at Little Eden Rose, um, I have triplet little baby girls. Uh, they are three years old, so I guess they're not little babies anymore. They'll always be babies in my mind, I guess. Uh, but they are all girls. I had all girls, so I never got to name boys. Um, in my whole life, I wanted boys. And, and my whole family thinks it's kind of funny that I ultimately ended up with just girls. Uh, so I named all my glitters after boys because I had all these boys' names that I had thought my whole life about using. Uh, and then I never got to because I had the girls. All my girls. So it's real fun. Um, and so we named all our glitters after bo boys. So this one is named Bo. Uh, Bo is one of my best friends. So it is just fitting that he is one of our top sellers. So I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just applying in a thin coat, pushing it around. I'm sorry if you can hear the motors of my other turners. I've got one turner that I don't use very often going because it's really loud and it is currently very loud. You can hear it running in the background. I'm super sorry, guys, but I'm doing so many tutorials at once. I've got all my turners in use. Um, I don't like multi-turners. I like to be able to move my turners wherever I need to. Um, multi-turners take up a lot of space. And these guys, I just move it where I need to within the space. If I need to move them outside or inside or wherever. Uh, that's why I like individual turners. Um, I used to have a huge, like, 12-cup turner. And I will probably never have a turner that large again. I'll probably actually never have anything other than a one-cup one turner ever again. It's just personal preference. Um, people ask me why all the time. It's just, it's just personal preference. I, I, I like to be able to move them around. Okay, so now as you can see, one side looks a little bit darker than the rest. That's just because there's foam inside there. Um, it's spray painted white. So this, what you can see along the top, is the actual color of the cup. Um, the bottom is because it looks a little darker because there is foam inside. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean off my finger. And we're going to hit this with that torch. Let's get some of the... You want to make sure there's no micro bubbles uh, because the micro bubbles, even though you can't see them, will make it a textured surface and we don't want that. We want a nice new surface and this is not a thick coating of epoxy, uh, but it is, a, it is a full coating. So we're just going to do a quick, quick, quick little dusting of a uh, porch over the epoxy to catch any micro bubbles that might be there. Bottom. All right, now we're gonna let this guy go and we'll let him probably spin till, till, until tomorrow um, since it's getting, it's getting a little late in the day and we'll be back to do the next step. All right guys, see you soon. All right, we're gonna do the next step. Da, 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 with our inks um we have actually two coats of epoxy on this beautiful cup this remember has the pale very pale uh purple base color and then we did uh two layers of epoxy and then we added bow and then we um with the hang method and then i did two coats of epoxy over the top i did one coat then did a very gentle sand and then did a third coat um the reason being is you do want a smooth surface for this process um, the colors I chose to do on this one are, surprise, surprise, my favorites. Um, pink, this is called Intrigue. It's a pearlescent. I'm going to really focus the pink around the bottom here. And then we're going to actually put the aqua that I chose along the outside edges 
to give it a different look. And we're going to go just around because we know that pink is going to drip down and fuse into that blue as we turn it over with the rubber band. Um, so here we go. Let's get that cup set on there. Get my rubber band ready to go. And we're just going to place the cup down right on the pink. We're going to bring this up. It's like I said, this is meant to be kind of like a crackle phase. So we're not worried about crinkling or wrinkling in the, um, in the plastic. We're actually going for that look. Then we're going to uh, attach our rubber band. Oh no, we'll leave it over. We'll turn it over first. So now we're going to take it and kind of work. Make sure we work that out and down so that there's not a pool. We don't want a pool of um, ink on the bottom. This one is going to be very, very cool. Okay, and then we're going to lift it up, put our rubber band on it, and we're going to let this sit for a few days. All right? So just, I say a few days because it's kind of been rainy here. Um, usually alcohol inks dry relatively quick, but you want to make sure it's completely dry. Again, you want to make sure that you have nice, good ridges pushed in there. You want wrinkles. Um, that's what's going to give you that cool, edgy crackle effect on these wine glasses. All right, here we go. We're going to unwrap some other ones. All right, we have our other two cups. We are going to unveil them. So we're going to hope for some really good crackles on these bad boys. We've got the orange one first, the orangey yellow. That is so cool. Okay, so there is that one. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to try to... That is just on a dollar store wine glass. How rad is that look? All right. Now let's do our purple and blue. And same thing. How cool is that? Such a cool technique um, to do on these. So now what I'll do with these, um, these are going to get a nice gentle coating. I'm going to be very careful. I, I don't want to overcoat them because spraying too much will make the alcohol ink bleed. So I will be doing very light misting coats of um, spray, uh, clear matte spray paint over the top. And then we will get these under the epoxy and get this beautiful design epoxied in um, and get these completed. All right. We, and then again, we are going to be waiting on our, our glitter one is just a little bit behind because um, we had to take a little bit of time to uh, get him done because we had to wait for the glitter to get done. So he is still curing, uh, not curing up the alcohol ink is still doing its thing. We'll undo him, unveil him in a couple days and keep on moving. All right, guys, I've already got my nitrile gloves on and my chemical coma respirator on, and we are going to go ahead and get this epoxy on this cup. You can see where I've sprayed it with the matte finish spray. Um, it's no longer glossy and shiny. Uh, that's gone away, but that's going to seal in the alcohol ink so it doesn't move around and spread. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use my finger on this one. We don't need a very heavy coat. We're just going to put two thin coats on this cup because uh, it doesn't have glitter. Um, it doesn't need uh, lots of epoxy, um, but you can see immediately when I add the epoxy, that shine comes right back to that cup. Um, it's beautiful. Beautiful. We're just going to be patient adding this on around the cup. You could probably even do this um, a hang method style. Um, I'm, I'm probably adding a little bit more than actual hang method style. Because uh, hang method is only about, probably for this cup would be about one mill milliliter total, and that's really hard to measure. Um, so, uh, but I, like I said, I'm just doing a thin coat to make sure we seal in that beautiful alcohol ink and it does not get washed away in the dishwasher. Sorry, in the, when it's getting dishwashed. Washed. Ah! Whatever I'm trying to say. When you wash this cup, it doesn't get washed. The inks don't get washed away. We're just sealing in the inks laughing at myself. When you have triplets, your brain goes three different ways sometimes. Especially when your triplets don't have preschool because of COVID. We're just having fun staying home. 
Daddy's putting them down for a nap right now. All right, so this cup, there we go on our first layer. Like I said, this is actually more than I would normally put as a hang method coat. Um, so that's why it's on the rotator. It is still self-leveling. Um, and I am gonna hit it with the torch just a little bit to remove some of the bubbles like you've seen me on other tutorials. And then we're gonna jump in and we're gonna epoxy the other cup. All right, guys, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we are on cup number two. I am still suited up. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna, this one has, the inch don't go as high as up as the other one. Um, in some parts it does, in some parts it doesn't. This is kind of a really fun cup for all the different textures. Because some places the ink is down low and some places the ink is up high. And you can see the variance in some of the colors in these inks between the aqua and the purple. It's so pretty. And this is a really inexpensive cup to make and sell. So if you are doing a little farmer's market, a festival, just go to your local dollar store, grab a bunch of these, do this technique. Throw a couple thin layers of epoxy on them and have set, sell a set of two for like $25. And you've got, you know, what, like $6 in product set and people love them. They're gorgeous. Um, or do set, sell them in sets and personalize them for people with names. Uh, sell them to businesses that want to have give out gifts at Christmas or whatever to their employees. There's so many different options. Um, and there's a really good margin here because you can buy these wine glasses at the dollar store. Um, if you don't have a dollar store, but you have like a Ross or a Marshalls, and just find these cheap wine glasses in their uh, glassware department. Or Ikea. Those are other places to find really inexpensive wine glasses. I haven't epoxied in a few days out here in my workshop because it's been so cold and now suddenly all of a sudden today it's like 90 degrees. So we went from like cold and raining to like holy banana pajamas. It is warm. All right. So I'm going to torch this one, let it roll. And we'll add one more layer of epoxy to this. We'll just do two thin layers, just like the yellow orange one. And then we'll be done with this part. We're gonna, we're still, I'm still gonna show you guys the glitter one. Um, and the glitter one, I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff with it. Uh, so stick around for that part. All right, guys, here's the fun part, the reveal. Remember, this is a cup that had a very pale lavender base spray painted onto it. And then we did bow over the top and we did one layer of uh, epoxy. Then we did a very light sanding and then did a second layer of epoxy over the top. So how rad is that? Um, it's just a really, really, really cool look. I'm super excited. So this is just in comparison to the ones that we did with no glitter compared to ones using the bow as the backdrop. Um, I actually made a beautiful decal for this one. So we are going to get that ready and we're going to add a decal and then we'll get this one under epoxy. All right. So I created this decal and I did a print and cut on my Cricut machine. And um, so I just thought it was going to be beautiful with this, the colors of this cup. I'm going to use my weeding tweezers. Again, these are on our website. These are my favorite thing ever. And I printed this on our Little Ian Rose uh, printable vinyl, which I absolutely love. And like I said, I did uh, print and cut on my Cricut machine. I left the bleed on so that we don't have the white outer edge. Um, and we're just going to gently lift this up from the backing. Come on, little guy. I just want to be really extra delicate with him because he's his little center bits are very, very, very small. And there we go. Separate them off there. And he comes away quite easily. Um, a few of the little, oh, I should remove these little hearts first, but we can grab them now. The little cutout hearts. Oh, where's my weeding? Knife? Should have pulled these guys out first. Burp. So 
So this is our um, weeding ring and weeding tweezers on our website, guys. I love these. As you can see, it's very easy to, these tweezers get even the tiniest little detail, grab them, and then you can just stick it right down in the weeding ring and it pulls it right off the, right off the uh, tweezers. All right, so I'm going to lay him down just like that. Beautiful. Okay, and we are going to take the beautiful little tiny little roses, I mean flowers, and put them down randomly below. I've got my, uh, I'm using my stir sticks that we have on our website as to kind of to hold the cup in place as we go here. This is a nice blue one, so we'll stick it up a little higher so it doesn't get lost in the blue. And these are just little hearts. They're just little fun. You don't have to add these if you don't want. Um, they're just little fun accents. All right, so that's this one is ready to go. So what I will do is I will put this on my spray wand and I will do a clear coat spray, mainly focusing on this bottom beautiful crackled area. And then we will get this guy on the turner after that um, clear coat spray paint has uh, uh, fully dried. Um, I'll also probably do a dusting of the clear coat spray paint over the butterfly decal because we don't want um, the epoxy repelling because it's such a smooth, beautiful surface. So the matte finish spray paint over the top is going to help um, g have that epoxy grip onto it. So we're going to do a spray paint coat, spray paint, a coat of spray paint, and we'll be right back. 